another Sunday and another car show. It's funny, you know, I've been looking, meaning to go up to this show for so long since I moved to Wollongong, what, 17 years ago now, and you see all these shows and there's just so many opportunities to go and look at some really cool cars. So this event's operated by the Mustang Owners Club of Australia, the New South Wales division, and I was really taken aback by the wide cross section of cars that were there, old and new, um, and obviously being all American, it's GM and um, Ford, and a little bit of Pontiac and chucked in as well few Chryslers. So we'll just have a walk around. Um, it's about 40 minutes and I'll just talk you through some of the things and maybe some memories that go with it that some of these cars bring back to me. Um, and if you notice I lift the camera up like that's just to get over people because there's so many people at these shows normally I try and keep the ball rolling. You see that yellow Corvette there, my cousin had one of those and um, in Broken Hill and he rebuilt that and converted it from left to right hand drive and um, I don't have time to tell all the stories but um, Roger Radford had one of those and um, I reckon I was only about 13 or 14 so probably had a bit to do with some of my passion for all these old cars. So later on in the show you'll see a whole lot of Mustangs, obviously it's brought to you by the Mustangs this show. So. Um, they're all up the top on another car park and I'll walk around those but um, about midway through you'll see there was a bit of a, a thunderstorm come through and some of the bonnets went down. Man look at that, how good does that look? That looks a bit like um, when that was ordered they ticked every box for every option. I'll have the extra mirrors, I'll have the side spats, the sun visor, you name it. So it's going to be interesting this year with the supercars, isn't it, now that we've got the Camaro and the Mustang side by side there, sort of hanging to, um, to see them running now with um, a lot less aero. A lot of people talk, a lot of the drivers talking about how good they're going to be to drive, a bit more like the old days. Oh, look at over here, missed a few. There's, um, quite a few hundred cars to get through. So when I do these shows, you'll, you'll notice we would do our own music. If I, if I record on the day and there's music playing, I can't... Um, use the, the soundtrack so unfortunately when these cars come in that I can't give you the soundtrack because I then can't put it up on YouTube without the permission of the copyright for the music so that's why we do that and um, if I go to a show and there's no background music then obviously I'll bring you the noise as well. All these rat rods are a thing now aren't they? I've got a bit of a yearning somewhere along the line to grab a bike and put in the back of my ute because I reckon that's a cool thing to do. When we are up at Corley Rocks there was a lot of utes and pickups up there with um, all sorts of different bikes in the back of them. Looks like another LS. Now this was pretty tidy, still left hand drive. I hear all different stories about how good and bad some of these um, cars that come in from the States complete like that. I presume that one was brought in like that. Now this was a bit unusual. I think it was a Dodge. And I was written in the window there, but I can't read it now. But I think it was a Dodge, that pickup. Very 80s, 90s styling with um, all the MSD bits showing and the the blower re retaining belts and all on it. I remember sort of all that going on back a bit. Sitting down nice and low.
plenty of diversity in all the cars is um, just in this first row just so many different styles of cars Nice bit of late model stuff going on here, you see the supercharge out of um, late model GT. Very nice truck, nice blue. God, look how big that is compared to the F100, it's amazing. That's a nice clean looking pickup, isn't it? Check out the bonnet fade on this. It's obviously been sitting in a carport somewhere with a nose hanging out. Someone said the other day that I should keep my panel van in patina, but I'm afraid that's never going to happen. I'm a, I'm a shiny car sort of person. Clevo looks like that's been pulled straight out of an XC Falcon, I reckon, or a Fairlane. I dare say if they were the record covers off it, a nice little 302. Now check out the styling on this. The roof on this thing was amazing. I don't recall the terminology, but there is a terminology for that style of roof. And um, I remember Foose doing one where he, he put a stainless steel roof on there and polished it all. We'll give it a satin style finish. Push button auto. They were the days. These boys must have decided to give it a quick polish. Well, we don't know what's happening with the, um, the focus there, jumping all over the place. It's funny, all these big cars, I don't necessarily know which ones are which and what they all are, but you know, when I was growing up, my parents had um, quite a lot of big Dodge Phoenixes and LTDs and all sorts of cars like that. So I guess that's where, you know, my love of these style of cars. And then, you know, who doesn't love a Thunderbird? Check that out. I often say to Heather, I could imagine myself in something like that, and she goes, really? Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Someone's nice little Camaro just sitting over on its own. The classic center lines. Whoa. 
I don't know, sometimes I, I, I'm watching this on the, the monitor here and it looks like the camera's going a million mile an hour, but I don't think it's as bad when you guys are watching it. Hopefully not anyhow. Yeah, I like that LTD. I don't think that'd fit in a lot of today's garages actually on the house. It's a good looking thing and I think if my memory is correct that's probably like a Riviera or something like that. Now there used to be one of these running around Broken Hill, um, Annie Jenkins that was involved with the salt flat races. I don't know if it was the exact model as that one but um, he had one of them big town cars with the suicide doors and all on it. Used to be his daily driver. He was out at Silverton and he used to hand cut pennies and then went into um, hand cutting Australian dollar coins and stuff and he had to have a license to do that out at Silverton but he's left there now I think he still does that somewhere else but this was nice and clean I like these um, race car style dress ups, even like all the, um, the late model stuff, you know, with the, the Dick Johnson cars and the Peter Brock cars and all that. I really like that, that look. I mean, it's something that you can do that, I mean, it used to be a real standout. Now there's more and more of them, but I, I actually like the, the idea of doing that. I was flicking through this earlier with Louise and she commented about all the pastel colours. That is sensational. That's certainly some spectacular motoring all together in one place. So this club I'm sure was up at um, the show I went up to in, um, in Sydney not that long ago, back in November, with a, a good row of caddies and there's a few different ones here but some spectacular cars. Bit of late model going on again there. So my dad liked that style of car, so his last, I won't say it was his last car that he bought, but it was meant to be the last car he bought, was the caddy that I ended up with, with the front wheel drive and um, I'll throw a picture of that up because he bought that as his last everyday driver but found that um, it was a little bit too hard to get parts if you're off on holidays and something went wrong with it. So he was in his 70s when he bought that and um, someone brought it in and converted it in Australia and it was only a few years old and he ended up um, keeping it and got himself a, a late model LTD as a driver.
Nice some cars here, I don't have any idea what it is. Have a look at the front of that. Very unusual. So they had a reasonable run of traders there, and I recall doing a little bit of footage here for you, so all sorts of signs and memorabilia. I managed to keep my hand in my pockets because I've got a bit going on here, but i um, got to hold myself back. Plenty of forward signs there. Lowriders. I wonder what them things actually like to, to ride in just on the on the open road with the hydraulics on them little wheels and stuff. Good looking nose on that. I dare say that's a Pontiac by the look at that, I would say. And then a Chev and another Chev. It's interesting how the styles stayed the same through all the different models. You sort of get a feeling what they're going to be. Nice little tidy roll of chefs. I remember this now with the surfboards, a nice white interior. See where all them cars come from in them 70s movies, can't you? D different style Pontiacs, and I think Pontiac must have fought, put a fair bit of money into the movie scene back in the 70s because there's definitely plenty of them in all the different um, 
car chase movies and things. I was talking to the guy about the wheels on that, that outer edge on that wheels, a little bit how I'd like to maybe do the wheels from a van. Just that sort of machine look rather than a polished look. And I'm pretty sure I go over here and check out the taco on this. It's some of the stuff from the, the 70s was pretty cool. The external mounted taco. Now this car here, I've seen that and I couldn't believe that because when I was about 14 or 15 I actually made a model of that car, um, that particular car, and to this day I've still got it sitting in the glass cabinet so I might have to grab the camera out and get a little shot of that one as well because that definitely brought some memories back. Great use of colour on that car, I love it. If you're towing for work or play, make sure your vehicle's up to the task. Your gross vehicle mass can be upgraded to keep everything legal and above board. Find your nearest stockist at lovelsauto.com.au and talk to the professionals about getting your vehicle right for the job. So did you get that? Get your vehicle sorted out and make sure you're not towing illegally. And I'll take the opportunity just to thank Lovells because they're the ones that are making it possible for us to do this. and. Um, have Louise do the editing and make sure we get a decent show coming to you, so thanks to those guys. That's an unusual colour combo, I like that. Geez, that looks a lot like one of the ones Dad had as well, some of the old photos have been going through. So we're not even in with all the Mustangs yet, but um, there's still plenty here. It's a pretty laid back show and when we're driving up I said to Heather, geez I didn't check the, the site to see if it was still on because there was a bit of a threat for rain and it said on there that if there looked like there was going to be rain they'd have it inside. And obviously the forecast said it wasn't going to rain because it was outside, but you'll see very shortly it did end up um, had a shower come through. And if someone sell them a couple here, if you're quick you'll be able to write the number down if you're looking for a nice Mustang. So I, I thought that's a bit unusual, it just looks like a Falcon, but it's left hand drive, so it's obviously an American Falcon of some sort. and down she come. So I had to do a rush over myself, everyone else, because I didn't have anything covering the camera. So I um, got in there and then went and got the brolly and did some more footage. But it just, it, it came that quickly. Everyone got caught out. And all those shades that you see there are actually salon. So they're not actually stopping the water, they're just the sun. So there's a lot of people getting wet and a lot of windows getting wound up in a hurry. So once I grabbed my borrowed at Brolly, I headed out. So these were all primarily Mustangs now that were out up on the top um, car park next door. And um, there was still a few bonnets up, but it probably rained quite solid for about 15 minutes and then sort of cleared up and went away. But um, yeah, just made a bit of a mess of the day, really.
but I thought I'm here so I better make sure I get the rest of the cars in So there's pretty pretty much every shape and form in a Mustang that you could want to see. Um, all the way through from the 64s right through to the new stuff. It's obviously a very strong club. So I've got the gimbal in one hand and the umbrella in the other, so I'm not quite as steady as I normally am with the camera because um, I often change hands and hold it double-handed, but with the umbrella I couldn't, and it was funny, after about 15 minutes I was struggling to hang onto the camera, so it's probably a bit shaky when I get to the end of this lot. So if you love your Mustangs, it's a good um, good event to go to next year. Sort of go along and check it out because there was um, something for everyone that um, if you like the Mustang, that's for sure. The aftermarket people have done a good job of producing all the different products for these late model ones. I mean, they, they were some very distinctive cars there that obviously had parts from all over. It was funny, I'd always wanted a Mustang. I when I decided I'd have one and um, build one up. It became quite a, a difficult chore then to work out exactly what model and what styling, you know, whether it be a fastback, whether it be a coupe, you know, as most people would know, I ended up with a 66 coupe, but um, I've always liked the 69s as well on a fastback, but they're just, um, you know, such a nice car, and then it, when it comes time to say, well, I'm going to own one, it's, um, it was hard to make that decision, and then the thing I didn't even think about was how small the car the 66 is, because you know, I'm not the smallest bloke and you get in there and it's, it, you actually fill the thing up. And this is the first time I'd seen a bullet in, um, in real life as well. It had a really nice, subtle, clean look about it. I really liked it. couple of um, that mid-era that you don't see a lot of Mustangs from that era. This thing looked pretty good for, um, you know, everyone talks about primer greys nowadays, but with the orange and the black on it, it um, looked quite good and a very reminiscent of that um, pace car that I was talking about earlier. Look at the depth of the front of that. It's that um, full on Shelby look. Some big brakes in there as well. It's 
Shelby and Roush, and of course now we have our own um, Herod Motorsport that have put out some magnificent um, Mustangs as well. Been very successful what they've done. I was wondering what I was going back there for, a fair bit of dish in the back of that. I was just thinking when I decided to do the Mustang, Heather and I went to the Mustang Nationals in Melbourne and had a wander around there. It was about, I don't know, hundreds of Mustangs there. And it all it did was cloud me a bit to work out which one I wanted, I think, at the end. But I um, ended up having to make a choice and uh, settled on the 66. I don't know if these guys worked out when they parked there, but check out the sign behind this little row of Mustangs here. Parking for seniors. I thought that was quite funny. Oh, I must have missed a row, I've got to go backwards. Well, you want to stand out in the crowd? How about that? So a few people starting to move out now without umbrellas, it's starting to clear a little bit. Yep, chamois are out. How good are these new towels? Got a couple of those from mothers that you just throw them on and it just sucks all the water off. Makes washing the car so much easier. There you go, there's an aspect that's um, done a bit of track work by the look of it. There's a fair bit going on with this thing as well. Check out all the add-ons on the front of that. Some little wheels and some little brakes. Very nice. That's not dissimilar to how I'd like the engine to look in the van, I think. So that's the end of the Mustangs for a little bit.
some very nice Camaros there. I'm not sure whether you can hear it in the sound trap, but um, talk about rain, it's teeming down outside here at the moment. I'm in the office and um, it's sitting on the veranda outside. It's probably coming through, it's that loud. This is a fairly heavily modified um, car as well. Look at the wide body. But I think I went around the front and had a bit of a look as well. Very unusual looking thing. It's definitely something for everybody. So many of these remind me of all those model cars I used to make. So my plan over the next um, 12 months is to get out to some more shows. We'll be doing some indoors and um, the next indoor show I'm heading down to um, Melbourne for Showcar Melbourne in February. And then um, up at Crookwell to a, like a chrome bumper show up there near, near Goulburn. And um, with thanks to Lovells, I'm going to be able to bring you some of that and um, to show you some of the cars I like. We'll try and bring you every car, but obviously talk about the ones. Um, and throughout the year get to um, as many shows as we can get to and bring you some quality footage of the cars at the events and then back to back with that we'll be still keeping up to date with what's happening around the workshop I've seen those two at the All Ford Day and it caught me out I didn't realise they were Mustangs until I got up a bit closer to them but um, Definitely a standout thing when they're parked together like that. Every time I see a blue Ford, I always think of Darren because I think every car of Ford he's ever owned has been blue. Couple of nice charges there. Wouldn't be an All-American day without a General Lee, would it? Almost looks like a cop car, that one, with the steelies and all on it. Check out the plastic woody, would you? It's just sitting on its own there with all the stickers from the US. And then the, um, all the woodwork on the side was all plastic. I thought, what a classic. 
You've got to wonder sometimes how some of these cars survive. And now all of a sudden they're a collectible. I wonder if they used to call that a shark front. It looks a bit like a shark. So I thought I'd better wander back then and catch the last couple of rows that I missed when that rain came down. So um, we just wander back over into the, um, the main car park where we started. And I don't know whether I've done a bit of a double up, but I need to remember where I got to. American Muscle Car Club. Well, I've got to say, I've seen a lot of cars that I don't know that I'd seen before. Um, really good range of um, different cars that Nova must have grabbed my eye but I know I've seen that earlier so um, I must have liked that just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything throw back to the 80s and graphics trying to sneak a little peek in here this little nice engine bay and a guy lifted the bonnet up for me it's a very classic tidy look isn't it If you put scoops on a car like that, on a custom car, they'd say you're mad. The factory doesn't, it's cool. Now yeah, I think I'm lost altogether. When you're doing these walk-arounds, it's interesting. You've got to. Um, you might say I turn back every now and again, or go a different way. It's normally because there's people that um, are going to be in my way, so I just try and work my way, or take a bit more of a car in to be able to keep filming without cutting and shutting all the time. Check out the roof line on that. Classic bit of wing work there.
And I've just realised now we've got to double up because I was talking about that Corvette earlier, but um, we'll just keep cruising along because this is, I think, the last row. Nice bit of airbrush work here. So that's when I think I realised. So thanks for joining us. Really enjoying getting out and catching up with people at the shows. If you see me at the show, I've normally got my shirt on. Say hello, I'll try and stop. If I wave you on, I'll come back and um, catch up. So thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe.